Good morning and welcome back to our daily Bible reading. I'm Ray Reynolds, the minister of the Summerdale Church of Christ. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 today. Hope you'll open up your copy of God's Word and read along with us as we study the Word of God. Chapter 7. Now concerning the things of which you wrote to me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, because of sexual morality, let each man have his own wife and let each woman have her own husband. Let the husband render to his wife the affection due her, and likewise also the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another except for a consent of a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and to come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. But I say this as concession, not as a commandment. For I wish that all men were even as myself, But each one has his own gift from God, one in this manner and another in that. But I say to the unmarried and to the widows, it is good for them if they remain even as I am. But if they cannot exercise self-control, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. Now to the married I command, yet not I but the Lord, a wife is not to depart from her husband. But even if she does depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And a husband is not to divorce his wife. But to the rest, I, not the Lord, say, if any brother has a wife who does not believe and she is willing to live with him, let him not divorce her. And a woman who has a husband who does not believe, if he is willing to live with her, let her not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean. But now they are holy. But if the unbeliever departs, let him depart. Brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases. But God has called us to peace. For how do you know, O wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, O husband, whether you will save your wife? But as God has distributed to each one, as the Lord has called each one, so let him walk. And so I ordain in all the churches. Was anyone called while while circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Was anyone called while uncircumcised? Let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing. But keeping the commandments of God is what matters. Let each one remain in the same calling in which he was called. Were you called while a slave? Do not be concerned about it. But if you can be free, rather, use it. For he who is called in the Lord while a slave is the Lord's freed man. Likewise, he who is called while free is Christ's slave. You were bought at a price. Do not become slaves of men. Brethren, let each one remain with God in that state in which he was called. Now concerning virgins, I have no commandment from the Lord, yet I give judgment as one whom the Lord in his mercy has made trustworthy. I suppose, therefore, that it is good because of the present distress that if a good, uh, it is good for a man to remain as he is. Are you bound to a wife? Do not seek to be loosed. Are you loose from a wife? Do not seek a wife. But even if you do marry, you have not sinned. And if a virgin marries, she has not sinned. Nevertheless, such will have trouble in the flesh but I would spare you. But this I say, brethren, the time is short, so that from now on, even those who have wives should be as though they had none, those who weep as though they did not weep, those who rejoice as those who did not rejoice, those who buy as though they did not possess, and those who use this world as not misusing it. For the form of this world is passing away, but I want you to be without care. He who is unmarried cares for the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he who is married cares about the things of the world, how he may please his wife. There's a difference between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman cares about the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and spirit. But she who is married cares about the things of the world, how she may possess her husband. And this I say to you for your own profit, not that I may put a leash on you, but for what is proper, and that you may serve the Lord without distraction. But if any man thinks he's behaving improperly towards his virgin, if she is past the flower of youth, and thus it may be, let him do what he wishes. He does not sin, let them marry. Nevertheless, he who stands steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, but has power over his own flesh, and has so determined in his heart that he will keep his virgin, does well. So then he who gives her in marriage does well, but he who does not give her in marriage does better. A wife is bound by the law as long as her husband lives, but if her husband dies, she's at liberty to be married to be to whom she wishes, not only in the Lord, but he she is happier if she remains as she is, according to my judgment, and I think I also have the Spirit of God. Chapter eight. 
Now concerning things offered to idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. And if anyone thinks he knows anything, he knows nothing yet as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, this one is known by him. Therefore, concerning the eating of things offered to idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world and that there is no other God but one. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we for him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we live. However, there is not in everyone that knowledge, for some with consciousness of the idol until now eat it as a thing offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. But food doesn't commend us to God, for neither if we eat are we the better, nor if we do not eat are the worse. But beware, lest somehow this liberty of yours becomes a stumbling block to those who are weak. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge of the eating in the idol's temple, will not the conscience of him who is weak be emboldened to eat those things offered to idols? And because of your knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died? But when you thus sin against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I'll never eat meat again, lest I make my brother stumble. So grateful you joined us today in this reading of God's Word. Join us again tomorrow as we continue reading here in 1 Corinthians. Until the next time, have a blessed day.